Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Togoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do two main things. Number one, we're going to differentiate between what are called proto-oncogenes and oncogenes and see how oncogenes can cause cancer. And then we'll also, number two, look at the function of tumor suppressor genes and see how mutations in those can also cause cancer. Okay, so before we get into proto-oncogene and oncogene, let's actually just consider this DNA strand right here. So I've got it divided up into segments of three nucleotides to make it easy. So here's our DNA strand. Now, as we know, a DNA strand is going to be transcribed into messenger RNA or mRNA. And you can see here that all the bases, we have the codons right here, uh, triplet nucleotides, and they're complementary to the nucleotides of the DNA strand. Okay, we already know this. So this is our mRNA strand. And then our mRNA strand is going to be translated into a protein. Now in this context, this protein is a cell cycle regulator. So what is the cell cycle? Well, the cell cycle is where a cell begins an interphase, which has a few subphases like G1, S phase, and G2. And then it progresses into mitosis, which is where the cell actually divides. Now, in particular, within interphase between the individual phases, like between G1 and S, and between S and G2, and between G2 and M, there's what we call checkpoints, okay? So for example, let's consider the checkpoint between the S phase and G2, right? S phase is where DNA replication occurs. And so what would happen if that cell were allowed to continue through interphase and eventually divide through mitosis? Well, that mutation that occurred in the S phase during DNA replication would be allowed to propagate into the two daughter cells that occur as a result of mitosis. And then when they divide, you'd have that mutation and it would just propagate over and over and over again. And so what we have between the phases of interphase are checkpoints. And at each checkpoint, certain things are verified. For example, is there any DNA damage or DNA mutations? Um, is there any significant other types of cell damage? And so that's why we have these cell cycle regulators. If there is any significant issues, they halt the cell cycle. Okay? So some of these regulators may function at the checkpoint between G1 and S. Some may function between S and G2, but that's what they do. So that begs the question, what if you had a mutant cell cycle regulator? Well, to understand that, let's actually mutate the DNA. Okay, So here's a mutant strand of the DNA. It's the same as this strand, except the first triplet nucleotides, instead of AAA, is CCC. Okay, That's going to lead to a mutant RNA. Okay, Everything else here in the RNA strand is the same, except the complementary bases to CCC are GGG. And that gives us a mutant cell cycle regulator. This green circle right here relative to the pink one is supposed to denote that it's mutant. And therefore it's defective. It's not going to be able to perform its normal function. So if we have a cell here in interphase, and let's say it accumulates a mutation, most likely during the S phase where we have DNA replication, uh, then that mutation will be propagated into future progeny cells. So all the daughter cells and their daughter cells and their daughter cells after it. The other thing that these cell cycle regulators do is just in general slow the rate through the cell cycle and slow the rate of cell division. So just to give an arbitrary example here, let's suppose that in one day we had a cell that divided just once. Okay, So every day it divides once. That means at the end of every day you're going to have two cells instead of one. Okay. But if we have these regulators that are defective, the rate of progression through the cell cycle and therefore cell division is going to be way faster because these things are not there to slow it down. So instead of dividing once, it's going to divide a bunch of times because it's defective. And so what do you think this is going to allow? It's going to allow uncontrolled proliferation or cell division. Okay, And you're going to have tons and tons of cells and assuming they start accumulating other properties that we'll talk about in the next video, you get cancer. There are three major properties of cancer cells. Those are abnormality, uncontrollability, and invasiveness. And the fact now that you've got defective cell cycle regulators that can no longer slow down the rate of cell division, you're going to have uncontrolled growth. 
and that's a precursor to cancer, assuming that we have those other properties there of invasiveness and abnormality. Okay. So now here's the question. What's the difference between a proto-oncogene and an oncogene? So a proto-oncogene is just a gene that encodes a cell cycle regulator. However, to be the proto-oncogene, that gene cannot be mutant. It has to be a healthy, normal gene. No mutations. Okay. So this gene right here is not mutant. Therefore, the mRNA is not mutant, and then the resulting protein is fully functional. It's able to function to uh, control the progression through the cell cycle and then cell division. So proto-oncogenes are not bad. Okay? They sound bad, but as long as they're not mutant, they're perfectly fine. They just encode cell cycle regulators. Okay? Now, when you hear the term prototype, Right? I'm sure Steve Jobs, when he was making the iPhone, there was a prototype that they made before they had the actual one that was sold in stores. The prototype comes before the actual thing. Right, So the prototype becomes the actual product. Right, In this case, the proto-oncogene can become an oncogene. Now, an oncogene is cancerous because clearly what you see here, the oncogene is the mutant form of the proto-oncogene. So now we have a mutant form that forms a mutant mRNA and a mutant cell cycle regulator that's defective and no longer able to control the rate of mitosis. Now you get this uncontrolled proliferation. Okay, so the big thing here is that a proto-oncogene is a normal healthy gene that encodes a cell cycle regulator, but the oncogene is just the mutated form of the proto-oncogene and it encodes a defective mutant cell cycle regulator. Okay, proto-oncogene, fine. Oncogene, bad. Now, when we talk about proto-oncogenes and oncogenes, we're really only talking about these proteins functioning as cell cycle regulators. The tumor suppressor genes and tumor suppressor proteins, uh, they, they're very similar in how they become mutated and what effects they have, but we don't talk about proto-oncogenes and oncogenes with respect to tumor suppressors. Those are uh, exclusive for cell cycle regulators. But we also do need to talk about the tumor suppressor genes and their proteins. So here's a plasma membrane right here of some cell. Here's a receptor in the membrane, and down here's the cytoplasm. Let's suppose we have some growth factor right here. Here's our growth factor, and it binds to that receptor. A good example of this could be insulin. That's our growth factor, and then here's the insulin receptor. Now, when insulin binds to its receptor, it triggers an intracellular cascade, normally of proteins assembling near the plasma membrane and then resulting phosphorylation uh, cascade, right? Now, insulin is a growth factor. And what do we know about cancer? Well, not only do we have uh, uncontrolled proliferation, but we also have uncontrolled growth, okay, where the cells become too big, and also becoming bigger aids in their cell division, so there's proliferation. So uncontrolled growth is bad, okay? And so in a normal, healthy cell, we like to control these processes so they don't get out of control, right? And so that's done through tumor suppressor proteins, which are encoded by tumor suppressor genes. Okay, so these are our proteins, and they can really just block any one of these processes. So when insulin binds to this receptor, you get the activation of this protein, which then in turn activates this protein, which then in turn activates this protein, and you get growth proliferation and differentiation, all three of which are out of whack in cancer. And so to prevent these things from getting uncontrolled, you have these tumor suppressors. So this one, for example, blocks the activation of this protein by the insulin receptor. Okay and therefore it slows everything else down. And by blocking any of these steps, you slow down these three processes. But what happens if there's a mutation in the tumor suppressor gene? Well, very much like we saw with the cell cycle regulators, if there's a mutation in the tumor suppressor gene, then the mRNA is mutant, and then these tumor suppressor proteins are mutant. And then they're dysfunctional, and they're no longer able to block these steps right here. And so if they're no longer able to block them, then these things just get out of whack. And now you have uncontrolled cell growth, cell proliferation, and cell differentiation. That has to do with the uncontrollability of cancer. Okay, we'll talk more about abnormality and invasiveness as we go throughout this playlist. But hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how cancer can be induced by mutations in both uh, proto-oncogenes, which remember encode the cell cycle regulators, and tumor suppressor genes. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.